Hello, tonight on Business Life, former Finance Minister Seth Tekpe jumps to the defense of the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank for their numerous warnings to the government over the poor fiscal state of the economy. We will join us live. Also, domestic debt exchange program likely to weigh on the balance sheets of commercial banks and consequently reduce credit to the private sector. Plus, Pix Farmers Association of Ghana to hold meeting to decide on intended demonstration after a Greek ministry denied engaging third party to import pork from the U.S. These and many others shortly. With us, I am Pius Kujubaka to our very first story. The domestic debt exchange program is likely to weigh on the balance sheets of commercial banks and consequently reduce credit to the private sector. That's according to international research and market information firm Fitch Solutions. In its January 2023 Sub-Saharan African update, Fitch Solutions said the reduction in loans, particularly to corporate institutions, will impact on the economy. Mike Urunga is a senior country risk analyst at um, the bank. When talking about access to credit, another factor that I think is really important to mention here is Ghana's domestic debt restructuring program. So while mm -hmm. negotiations are still ongoing, the likely restructuring of domestic debt will weigh on commercial banks' balance sheets, weakening their ability uh, to issue loans to corporates, so further restricting access to uh, credit for uh, businesses. Given the high levels of consumer price inflation that we're still seeing, rising taxes under the IMF program and higher uh, interest rates, we believe that political instability uh, is likely to rise in Ghana in 2023. So if we shift our attention to the right hand side chart, you can see that the, the Ghana short term political risk index has been on a downward uh, trend for the past 12 months. While longer on the economy and government has assured that it will use the mid-year budget in July this year to announce some expenditure reviews. It follows Finance Minister Ken Ufuriate's announcement that some expenditure cuts will be undertaken to complement the domestic debt exchange program. There's more in this report. Joy Business understands that there are some reviews currently ongoing that will first hit the macroeconomic targets for it to be adjusted in July this year when the finance minister presents the mid-year review of budget estimates to parliament. Government is also working on the expenditure numbers that will result in some cuts, as well as bring the end-of-year target to some favorable levels. Finance Minister Ken Ufuyata is projecting to spend about 205 billion Ghana cities by the end of 2023. However, based on what we are picking up, this amount could go down significantly after July this year. One area that will be immediately affected is the interest payment expenditure as captured in the 2023 budget. This is because of the current debt exchange program and how that could impact on this expenditure item. I could also see the numbers come down significantly. Government is also working with the World Bank to review some of government's flagship social intervention programs. And how that expenditure allocation can also be reviewed going forward. Well, it is not clear for now whether these expenditure cuts will be that significant to support the current debt exchange program that has resulted in some bondholders losing a significant amount of their investment. Finance Minister Ken Ofoyata has told Joy Business that government remains committed to reducing its expenditure to fall in line with the current challenges facing the economy. Now onto our very headline story we have for you. Former Finance Minister Seth Tekwe has jumped to the defense of the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank for their numerous warnings to the government over the poor fiscal state of the economy. Now the IMF in its 2019 Article 4 review warned the government to cut its rising debt and budget deficit to sustainable levels. Again, the World Bank president in 2022 urged the country to join the G20 COVID-19 debt service suspension initiative. However, some Ghanaians believe the two Bretton Woods institutions contributed to the challenges facing the economy today. Well, in a tweet, Mr. Tekwe, however, said the fund and the World Bank cautioned the country about the potential serious risk of debt distress if it does not bring its house to order. 
Well, the former finance minister, Seth Tekpe, joins us via Zoom for more. Grateful you could join us, Mr. Tekpe, and good to see you. Now, what will be your answer to concerns that the Bretton Woods institutions most often delay in uh, surrounding the warning or sounding the warning bells for developing countries to take stringent measures to avoid slippages? Well, thank you very much, and uh, I hope you can hear me this time. Yes, I can. Um, okay, you're welcome, and uh, good evening to your uh, viewers and, and to your listeners. The, the point, I don't think that um, this should be preoccupying us very much at the moment. Uh, what I sought to do was to not so much to defend the IMF or the World Bank, which is capable of defending themselves. I was just pointing to the fact that you know, we should be a bit more measured, you know, because they have been sounding, you know, the warning for a very long time. Um, I, you know, picked from the 2019 Article 4 that Ghana needed to do a major correction. This was uh, debated, uh, but there was not much that was done uh, at the time. Prior to that, uh, and let's not, let's not give all the credit to the IMF for the World Bank. Prior to that, Academics, fiscal experts, and other economists were pointing to the fact that issues like uh, offsets, when you say arrears is seven billion and you offset it by five billion and carry forward only two billion, issues like putting bailout costs in footnotes instead of adding them to arrears and to the debt, you know, was a dangerous trend. Mm. You know, I, I think we discovered some of this you know, for ourselves, long before, uh, between 2017 and 2018, before 2019, the IMF made the adjustments and went into detail and gave details. Even the re reports were released, even whilst we were reading the budget. Then fast forward, 2020 comes, and under the cover of COVID, we asked for a loan, uh, which the fund gave us $1 billion and later SDR, the report, what we call the Rapid Credit Facility Report, mm. repeated the 2019, you know, caution, you know, that we needed to do, and actually disclosed a fiscal gap, you know, of about 6%, uh, and of which 3% was estimated to be due to, to COVID. Surprisingly, you would note that even then, part of the resources for filling that gap had to go do with the gold monetization. It's not new. Is there, and you can check your uh, producers can check, you know, for for you what I'm saying. Then 2021, as recently as 2021, you know, again the fund went excessively, and that's when they flagged the risk of debt distress. We were at risk of debt distress, or they were using a more nuanced tone, but we were very explicit. It really shouldn't also surprise you that in the 2021 article four. The fund was first to raise the issue of the use of COVID resources long before our own Auditor General you know, came up with it. So all I'm saying is that mm. uh, whether it is an ideological discussion, whether it is, it, is a, it is a realistic discussion, and yes, the fund you know, has done you know, uh, things which many people believe, and I'm not endorsing everything that's, you know, the fund did. And in the interest of disclosure, I did work there anyway. So I think uh, that's a very important point that I need to, you know, to make. So uh, that's the first part of okay. what I tweeted. But you'll notice that the more important thing which I tweeted was the fact that, as your last uh, commentator said, you know, the, we need as a nation, you know, to come to a resolution of the debt you know, factor. Mm. Because uh, if you take BOG, BOG needs, you know, help. BOG depleted not just our city reserves, you know, which were, uh, some of which belong to government, but the, the, the dollar reserves, you know, because BOG, when we say finance the deficit, was actually using those reserves in forex. That's why they, were, they are depleted to meet our debt commitments up to a time when it, no, not much significant flows were coming in, you know. And I think it's also interesting that, you know, we are talking about uh, expenditure now. I would say that we don't have to wait for six months, you know, to take a review, you know, mm -hmm. to Parliament. 
we should go to parliament with a statement. And I'm not saying anything which we did not do. You know, proud to, you know, the budget of, I believe, 2014, 2015, we went to parliament with statements and asked for certain measures that we wanted to take. And the reason I'm saying that we don't have to wait is that one, we know the figures. We know that the, we are in arrears of a pipeline of 77 billion, uh, 24 billion or so, uh, included in the medium term, of course, with some items which we need to clarify. We know that we did not reduce expenditure, and mm -hmm. we know that even as we are speaking today, we have so much, you know, uh, deficit. And we know that we are having difficulty financing it. We don't need somebody to come and tell us, because who are those who finance domestically if we do not have access, you know, to the external markets? It is a mobilization which is done by the same banks, you know, who buy the treasury bills, who buy the bonds, which are the subject of discussion. And we cannot, you know, and so we know these facts and the numbers are there. So I would say that since a reduction in the expenditure itself limits the fiscal space, as has been said in the past, let us expedite it and go in the next, maybe even one month. And that would even give confidence, mm. you know, that the government you know, is, is doing this part as far as the legacy projects and other expenditures, you know, are concerned, the size of government. These have been raised, you know, so why wait for, you know, six months? In fact, seven months, because the media review has often presented, you know, statutorily, you know, at the end of July, because you need the June numbers. You know, when you are doing a domestic debt exchange and you are doing, you know, a, a foreign, at the standard debt ex, a, exchange and you are negotiating, this is the best signal that we can give. So if it's an intention, ultimately, to review these numbers, I would suggest that we expedite it and go to parliament. Parliament just came. Usually the agenda is not full yet, you know, so that, you know, they can take the issues. All right. You know, uh, so that is the, the, what I have to say. All know, right. So let, let's touch on the ongoing <clears throat> debt exchange program. Do you foresee government meeting its target? Well, the government can meet its target, the government can negotiate. But I think as was inferred, you know, by one of your earlier contributors, mm. um, what does it amount to? Because, you know, the debt exchange is linked to the debt sustainability analysis that was done. And it's linked to two factors. It's linked to, those are linked to two factors. One, it's a precondition for us to go to the board. And two, the debt exchange is calibrated with the debt, you know, suspension. Debt is, uh, sorry, it's uh, calibrated with the debt sustainability because you will notice that, you know, the condition by the fund is that, you know, before going to board is that we must prove that our debt is sustainable and that we are capable of paying our debt. Remember, the fund itself is going to give us three billion. I think that has been, you know, confirmed. Three billion is so a small amount of money, right? And so the two things are are linked. And so if you say that you are not going to pay interest in 2023, or you are going to pay 5% instead of 2021, that itself, if a debt sustainability analysis were done after you entered the, the fund program, would change the situation from what it was or what it is today. You know, that makes the debt exchange. So the more compromises that, you know, we, we make, the more uh, the the careful calibration, you know, gets uh, out of, you know, alignment. And therefore, we must, de we must justify mm. that other things can give. And this is where the expenditure question, you know, which I raised coming. You know, if we cut expenditure, we can prove that part of the reason that we are getting, you know, we are doing this is to uh, cut expenditure. Then, I mean, who knows, uh, the 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 recalibration of the debt sustainability analysis can show that Ghana is capable, you know, of meeting, you know, uh, of restoring, coming back to, to pay, you know, uh, its, de its debt, which is having difficulty in paying as we speak. Well, so this, that's the fact. The two things are linked. Oh, and oh. they are also linked to going to the board and for the bailouts that we need in order for us to, you know, to bring the, the situation under control. On the, on, 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 a bit, on a bit about the expenditure, uh, we do know that government, or we are learning that government is likely to implement that in the media budget review sometime in July. But I just want to ask I mean, that you... Is what, that is what I said. Mm. 
That's mm. why I so said that we want to it know will be too late. Mm. Seven months is too late. All right, so you're calling for an immediate cut in the expenditure as you speak, right? No, I'm, I'm calling it's only parliament that can review the budget. So mm. I'm basically saying that if government wants to do this and we know the numbers, we can do it in two stages. We can take some of the numbers that are available to Parliament immediately. The Senate that says that you should wait for the media review, even though it was made mandatory under the PFMA. You mm. know, for family Parliament to look at it and, and give the necessary approval, and then we can finalize the exercise in the media review. That is all I'm suggesting. Because it will be a good signal. Remember, we are anticipating to go to the board, mm. you know, in April, you know, at the latest. So it will be a good signal if we show that we can cut expenditure, which will create a fiscal space for some of the compromises that have been made. Let me give you a specific example. What I'm saying is that if you said that you are, you are not going to pay interest in 2023 and you come to an agreement that some interest will be paid at 5%, where is that money coming from? If you go to parliament and you are able to save that 5%, I think it will be positive you know, at the negotiating table. My other point was to ask for enlarging the consultation. You know, at this stage, because everybody is feeling the pinch. Mm. I, I just want to get this quickly from you. The implications of uh, government's unwillingness uh, or government inability to meet its targets, basically. What is going to be the implication for that for us? And the implication is realism. Let, let's, take, let's take schools. We, we know the situation. We know that not much money is flowing you know, for feeding students and at FSHS, for, you know, parents, uh, some parents, you know, and including myself, who is still paying fees for nieces, nephews, and a few, you know, people know that we are paying probably even more. Of course, uh, inflation is uh, uh, taking inflation aside. We are probably paying more than when, you know, it was fee paying, you know, uh, secondary education. So, I mean, it's a real thing that we have to face mm. where we are now. It's no longer about, you know, a, 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 a gaining an advantage or, or otherwise. No. Mm. So I'm only trying to point to the realism that, you know, the situation has changed. And we know that we are accumulating arrears. We are unable to pay contractors, you know. So uh, those are the facts that I'm saying. I'm not saying anything theoretical. Thank you very much, Seth Tepe, for your time here on Business Live, speaking to us there. You're still watching Business Life still to come. Pig Farmers Association of Ghana to hold meeting to decide on internet demonstration after a Greek ministry denied engaging third party to import pork from the U.S. Hello, welcome back. The Pig Farmers Association of Ghana has told Joy Business that it will meet today to take a decision whether or not to demonstrate against the Ministry of Agriculture in the coming days. This was after it complained that a policy to import pork into the country will collapse their local businesses. But a response from the Ministry has pushed the association to consider the next action to take. The following report has more. The Pig Farmers Association of Ghana earlier served notice its members will go on a demonstration against the government's decision to allow the Ministry of Food and Agriculture sign a third-party agreement for the importation of large quantities of pork from the United States. In a statement, the Ministry denied the assertion that it has entered into such an agreement with a third-party organization. It explained that the Veterinary Services Directorate of the Ministry, rather, requested from the veterinary medical officers in the USA for certification for meat and poultry healthiness intended to be exported to Ghana. The Pig Farmers Association, however, say they will interrogate the response from the ministry and later announce the decision by close of day whether to demonstrate or not. To some other stories, the Commonwealth Enterprise and Investment Council says it is committed to supporting Ghana come out of its economic crisis. Chairperson of the Commonwealth Enterprise and Investment Council, Lord Jonathan Marland, who paid a cursive visit, sat down with my colleague Blazer Suga, where he revealed that talks will soon begin to create a Commonwealth free trade agreement to show up investment in Ghana and other developing countries within the IMF. Uh, to be back on the program. Yes, <laughs> and of course, um, you, you were here in the country about two years ago. Yeah. You met the president. You described 
Ghana as the black style of Africa, uh, giving our stellar economic performance at the time and yeah. how the trajectory was. Mm. How are you feeling now returning into a country that's now moving into austerity with the International Monetary Fund? Uh, and Ghana is like the rest of them. I, you know, I've come directly here from the UK. I'm on my way to Nigeria. It'll be the same story every country I go to. This very difficult time as countries um, try and recover from this huge shock, not only of uh, COVID, of course, but the war in Ukraine. I was just uh, going there because um, many experts have, have described that war, uh, the conflict and tension between Russia and Ukraine as an add-on effect to the post-COVID yes. uh, that shocks. Uh, but what's not forthcoming is the support to developing countries from the likes of the UK, w w which have managed the shocks of the, of the tension much more better. What we see uh, is a ramped up support to the likes of Ukraine, uh, giving yeah. the direct effects of the war. But here in Africa, we're reeling under the effects of uh, the disruptions in the trade and supply chains as yeah. well. From your perspective, uh, what, what should be the, the Commonwealth be doing uh, at such a crucial time to support um, less developing countries within the, asso the association? Well, I, I, don't be so hard on yourselves right. here in Ghana because mm. there's a lot of good things going. Uh, and, you know, the fundamentals are right. Uh, you're also getting support from the IMF, which is a Western support system. So, uh, obviously, um, Western countries are, 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 are helping and backing the IMF in, in what they're doing with you. So, that's a good thing. Um, the Commonwealth is obviously an alliance of countries. There's no formal relationship other than participating in a group. Uh, my role is to engender trade and investment uh, across Commonwealth countries, of which there are now 56. And uh, therefore, I think our role is very important as the world gets back into travelling, the world gets back into uh, a globalisation that uh, hasn't happened for the last two years as people have, countries and people have looked inwards rather than outwards uh, and are now recognising that we need to look outwards in order to develop trade, therefore develop growth, therefore develop prosperity and therefore get the engine of each country going again. Uh, you've been in Accra for a number of days. Uh, what, well, what I haven't you? actually. I've, sadly, I'm only here for, been here for sort of nearly 30 hours, mm. such is the mm. thing. I, I'd like to be in Accra for a number of days. So I'm just wondering <laughs> uh, what engagements have been taking place uh, just to boost... Well, I had, uh, I think I only had 14 meetings yesterday, right. which was sort of nearly a world record, uh, with banks, with um, ministers, with uh, government organisations, um, uh, with uh, property companies, etc. Uh, and I'm struck by how there is now this desire to start looking outwards, to start uh, seeing how um, banks in particular can no longer rely on the government for supporting them financially, are having to look at ways of uh, restructuring their balance sheet. I brought people out with me who, who are in that business, so they've been very interestingly uh, and warmly welcomed. Um, and uh, I see a, a lot of opportunity. We, we as you know, as an organisation, have people based here, uh, and we're determined to help uh, Ghana in every possible way. Lord Marland, in that interaction with my colleague, Blazer Sugathe, and that's it for Business Life for tonight. I am Pius Kujubaka. You can always get business stories when you log on to myjoyonline.com forward slash business. Always a pleasure serving you. We've got international business for you.